Hello, everybody, and welcome to the catch up for 2020 with Synergy. This is Andrew from Synergy, and I'm going to be taking you through our products and our new technologies and everything that we'll be doing in the next few months. So from the serene chaos of suburban Amsterdam and my work at home bolt hole, uh, I hope you enjoy and uh, learn something from the next few minutes. Thanks very much for joining us. I'm going to turn off my webcam now and start my presentation. So here we go. If all things are good, you should be seeing my screen now. And if you can see my screen, you can see my slides. And here we go. So this is the April 2020 Synergy product update. What's new, what's next, what's not to like. Uh, we're going to be talking about the new products that are coming through, or, or, or rather the new versions of our products that are coming through in the next few months or that have already recently been released, and what we've done in those products to make them that little bit more special than they were already. Uh, so to begin, let's uh, sum up what we're going to be doing. The first part is me talking to you, a few slides, a bit of information, and in the second part, I'll be showing you a few things, a few new features uh, that we've been talking talking about. So we've got hands raised. Let me just check that for a second. Okay, good. Just checking that. Okay. So okay. So start off with the talking. The key products and technologies for 2020 coming from Synergy, current and next versions, uh, as in what's now and what's what's next, and upcoming features, that's to say stuff that's not in the versions that are out now, but will be coming very, very soon. All of these are uh, interesting features and extend the flexibility and power of Synergy in new ways. So the products that I'm going to be focusing on today are our Synergy Capture System, Synergy Air Pro Playout, and Synergy Multiviewer. And I'll be talking about the technologies behind those that make them that bit more special, our technologies and those of others. Uh, SRT, the Secure Reliable Transport, uh, developed by the SRT Allowance as the way to take broadcasting into the 21st century. Daniel 2, our uh, in-house developed mezzanine codec that uh, significantly speeds up video processing without adding any strain at all to your CPU. And shared RAM that allows you to use video once you've captured it into our system across all of our applications without needing to re-render it, therefore saving a whole bunch of system resources. Current and next versions looks like this. Uh, right now, uh, we've had a couple of fresh releases, uh, which kind of brings us a bit up to date now. But uh, Synergy Air 14.1 is current. Synergy Air 15 will be next, and that's what I'll be showing you. Capture 14 is new. Well, there'll be a 14.x at some point later in the year, I'm sure of it. Uh, also new is Convert. Uh, both the, of these have, have emerged in the last couple of months. Multiviewer 15. Uh, is absolutely brand new, as is Route 15, which was released yesterday. Archive and desktop are currently stable, and we're not adding any features of, to, to them this year, but I will talk about them briefly because they are very important products for us. We have other options apart from the packages, obviously, that I've just shown you, uh, and we have our bundles that I wanted to talk about here. Uh, firstly, I wanted to talk about the Air Pro bundle. When you buy a playout solution from us, uh, you're not just getting uh, something that puts pictures and sound on screens. You're also getting uh, a graphics subsystem. You're getting uh, enterprise resilience. You're getting a full set of codecs and encoders, including Dolby and DNX HD. Uh, and as a result, this one single package provides all of your playout needs all tied together. Uh, the TV pack bundle comes around the same price as the Air Pro bundle, and it features a whole bunch of uh, our applications, as you can see, all put together. However, these would all need to run on one server, and they're missing the enterprise features that our full-featured versions have. But for a studio in a box solution or a city channel or something like that, uh, with the right hardware, it's perfectly possible to run several of these applications at once 
and allow uh, a simple broadcast system to run on a single server. Finally, we have our Solo Duo Quad package. Solo Duo and Quad gives you four channels up to, and these channels can be captured or play out. Uh, we only handle uh, files and streams here. There's no redundancy, there's no MAM. Uh, uh, it's very, very basic, but the playout and capture technology is the same playout and capture technology as in our full versions. So uh, Synergy Solar will allow you to capture in 8K, for example, should you wish to do so. Uh, and will support 8K playout, should you wish to do so. Obviously, if you're in the 8K market, you probably want something a little bit more sophisticated, but it will do it. So these are the other options from, uh, from us, the, uh, the bundle options that we bring to the table. So to start off, let's talk about Air Pro, Air Pro 15 with Titler. Uh, Playout Net is now supported up to 8K resolution. We've been showing this now for a, a, a little while. Uh, it supports almost all broadcast file formats and it also scales on the fly uh, with a simulcast in lower resolutions. There are playout uh, applications out there and playout systems that you need to transcode for and transport uh, media to and so on and so forth. None of that is true with Synergy Air. We can work with practically anything and we will make it fit uh, as we play it out, making for a much uh, tighter uh, and faster playout workflow. In addition, we have support for SRT. We're using SRT for input, we're using it for output, and we're also using it internally uh, inside AIR for new ways of integrating AIR. Very exciting, and we'll be seeing that a little bit later on. We also have a full branding solution and a playlist editor included. You can tie the playlist to the branding to allow you to create, for example, schedules straight out of the playlist with simple templates. We have NDI support in and out, and we have a couple of new things. DTMF support is finally there. People have been asking for this for a while, and we were always a bit resistant because it's analog. But there are so many people out there still using DTMF to trigger changes that we built it into air now. In addition, we have queued item preview output. Uh, this is actually super cool, uh, and this will allow you to take not only your play out, but also your queued next item and put them up on a multi-viewer for preview so that you can see on your multi-viewer what your next item is uh, and if necessary, change it, I guess. Um, the next thing that I want to mention is not in 15, but it will be coming during the year, we are confident. Uh, this is in stream subtitling. Uh, Full-on subtitling is uh, an extremely complex affair that, uh, for which we work with uh, our partner, Kavena, but a simple single stream of subtitles will be part of the Air Pro bundle uh, coming probably at the end of the year. This, uh, the, initially, it will be DVB and uh, teletext with uh, closed captioning for uh, across the Atlantic to follow later. If we go move on to Capture 14, just like Air, uh, it supports almost all broadcast file formats. There is a very flexible scheduling system built into it. You can schedule within the client itself, or you can also have a centralized web scheduler that will allow you to schedule from anywhere, uh, assign engines, and uh, etc. We have simultaneous capture to multiple containers, so you can be pulling in your high res and at the same time uh, write yourself a low res uh, with a burnt in time code to go out for subtitling or dubbing or whatever. SRT uh, input is supported, as is SRT also for preview. Um, again, very makes things very flexible. Chosen by the most demanding customers, that refers to the fact that it's used by a bunch of people um, that could pretty much buy any capture system they like, but they came to us. Uh, the Council of Europe, uh, the Berlin Philharmonic, and Major League Baseball in America, who have over 200 channels of capture running simultaneously, capturing every single game on any single game day. There are probably not so many of them right now, but when, uh, when they all come back, they'll be, uh, they'll be working with Synergy again. Uh, NDI is also supported. New in uh, the last version, 
8K support is finally there. We were showing this at IBC, where we had a full end-to-end -end workflow with Capture and our archive and also Adobe Premiere. Um, and we also have more wrappers and codecs, particularly at the high end. Uh, we now write a complete Avid uh, uh, file structure so that uh, our captures can go straight to an Avid technician for sweetening. And we are hooked into our telemetry system. I'll be speaking a little bit more about that telemetry system when I get to talk about MultiViewer. But it means that if you are handling a lot of captures and you want to keep track records of uh, how, how you've been doing, you can simply send us some data, uh, which we will put in a little box for you, and then we will display it for you on a web page so that you have a graphic graphical at a glance uh, picture of how your performance has been. Synergy Convert. Convert is, uh, has uh, just been released in a brand new version. The basic idea behind Convert is that it uh, sets you transcoding as a background task. So you can simply set up a bunch of agents that will be sitting waiting. And then when you start something, it will be assigned to the agents according to their availability. You can have as many agents as you like, spread across as many servers as you like to allow massively parallel transcoding. Uh, but it's not intended to be real time, it's intended for quality. All major codecs and wrappers are supported. The most recent edition is TS files are now also supported. You can start it by hand from a client, uh, or you can run it from a drop folder the way that people usually do these things with uh, transcoding applications. And you can set up templates for all of your uh, transcoding jobs so that it simply becomes a matter of dropping into the right place to make that particular uh, transcode happen and you can have as many of these templates as you like and you can organize them just as you need them. New in the newest version is the dedicated client. Previously we had a combined uh, progress monitor and uh, input client uh, that um, did the job but with a bit of looking at, looking at it, it was decided to split the client function out. Uh, this gives you a whole bunch more information than uh, previously and uh, makes it for a much easier uh, workflow. 8K is now also supported, so you can uh, work with 8K format uh, content. And social media uh, has been added so that you can now use Synergy Convert to create in exactly the right format for your choice of social media and feed content to it, which will then be uh, uploaded as required. Because this is in Synergy Convert, it means it's also in Synergy Desktop, so it's a very useful thing. The Synergy Multiviewer. We are still basking, even though it's a year later, we are still basking in the glow of the fact that we got the best software product last year at NAB uh, for this particular thing. Uh, take in your SDI, NDI, RTP, UDB, SRT, and or shared RAM uh, inputs and uh, you can have those as a mosaic, straightforward, two by four, whatever, or have your, uh, light, your own layout where you can add graphics, web bugs, clocks, bits and pieces, labels, um, and you can uh, scale MultiViewer to as many playouts as you like. Uh, all you need to do is for, uh, you can cram a whole bunch of channels onto a single server these days, but if you have more channels than that, simply group your multi-viewers together and composite those onto another multi-viewer. So no, no limit to the number of channels. We have customers out there already running hundreds of channels with uh, uh, multi-viewer. We have uh, integration with our other applications. So Synergy Capture status overlay is available. This means that if you feed the preview stream from Synergy Capture to your multi-viewer, then you will have a status on that screen. This is very handy for when you have on the multi-viewer, you have live events that are going to, be, going to be coming in on a certain channel, and you want to be sure that that channel is ready to record or that it's recording when the event is happening. You can see this straight on the multi-viewer because Capture will to send a, a tally, tally style uh, uh, caption to, cap, uh, to MultiViewer that you can view in the player. You can output to screen. Uh, so if you're using a huge uh, graphics card with like, four display port outs, then you can go out to four UHD screens, have 16 dot for dot uh, HDs if you want, uh, or alternatively, you can output to a stream. 
up to now RTP and UDP, uh, SRT has now been added. Uh, and with SRT, everything changes. Suddenly, you can run your multi-viewer anywhere on the internet. Uh, you can run your multi-viewer in the lobby of your building, simply send down an SRT stream to there. Uh, you can run the multi-viewer at home if you like. New and very exciting is the multi-layout output. So if you're using our designer layout, you would already know that we can switch between layouts, farm the players, and usually access these via hotkeys. But starting with MultiViewer 15, you can now create a separate output stream for multiple layouts. That means that you can have from one single MultiViewer server, you can send four screens to one part of the building, four screens to another part of the building. Uh, you can organize it just how you uh, want to have it. This is something that we've been asked for a few times. Uh, it's a, a major new feature, and I'll be showing it in a little bit. Um, but it uh, immediately increases the use of usability and flexibility of uh, multi-viewer by a huge amount. Um, we also now have color bar and tone detection built in. Uh, that is to say, uh, if you're coming, in, stuff's coming in from a satellite, and the satellite misbehaves, uh, you may well find that bars and a, uh, a test tone come up instead of your content. We will pick that up in MultiViewer. Uh, so uh, that's an additional set of alarms in, built into MultiViewer now. SRT and NDI uh, already mentioned the SRT support, but of course that's not just for outputs, it's also for inputs, as also NDI um, uh, as well. And now there is also secondary events support. So up to now with the multi-viewer, uh, in essence, what we've been doing is we've been allowing uh, you to receive your alerts via email, uh, via your data center's monitoring system, uh, via SMS, file rights, whatever. Now we, are also, we have also built in a secondary event structure. This means that you can use triggered secondary events the same way uh, from multi-viewer as you can from air and capture. Or in other words, you can set it so that <clears throat> on a critical alert uh, that the uh, a command is sent, secondary event command is sent, for example, to your router to switch to another input. So uh, a lot there in multi-viewer and uh, it's, it's coming along very nicely and gaining more and more support every day. Next up, we have Synergy Root. Now, uh, Root has had a big jump, um, as you may have noticed from the, the few slides ago. We've gone from number 11 to number 15. Some of that has to do with the fact that uh, the original version of Synergy Root did exactly what it needed to, and there wasn't much to add. But over the years, a couple of new things have been brought in, um, uh, both of which are uh, extremely significant. The first of those is SRT. We've been talking about it all along. We get into the demos, we're going to talk about it again. Uh, but with SRT support, Synergy Root moves from being a handy tool for managing your RTP streams within your uh, broadcast environment, and it becomes a directory that can handle all of your incoming and outgoing video, uh, irrespective of where that happens to be, because now you can pull in your uh, uh, streams from straight from the public internet, uh, and combine those with your in-house streams to give you the maximum flexibility and label them neatly so that you can simply point and click as to where you want them to go. Also now, secondary event support here again. Root uh, will uh, take secondary events from air to allow you to switch inputs um, and uh, will therefore suddenly be much deeper integrated into your production environment than it has been up to now. You the quick quick cover of archive and desktop for uh, catch up purposes. Here we have our proven, uh, it's been running in some places for over 20 years, uh, <clears throat> media asset management system based around our technology and uh, Microsoft SQL server. It has automated storage management because if you're working in media production, then you're having large volumes of data coming in on a running uh, 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 basis and that data can be uh, filling up your hard drives before you even notice. As a result, uh, Synergy Archive
build allows you to specify how long you want to keep something for and then it will tidily put it away for you uh, allowing a minimal uh, 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 <laughs> allowing a clean storage workflow with minimal manual intervention <laughs> we also have unlimited metadata fields not now of course unlimited metadata fields uh, that's kind of a two-edged sword because you can have too many of them but what we mean by that is that you can set your own metadata fields and you can set them any way that you like since the metadata is the key to managing the assets as the, being able to to configure it the way that works best for you is a crucial part of this application you can also use our media asset management system for all your production assets so not just your audio and video but scripts call sheets graphics uh, posters whatever else you happen to have that's associated with a production uh, it can all be kept in one place it can all be tagged together so that it can all be found at once it can all be moved away to secondary storage together uh, but it's simply not simply uh, a production uh, uh, tool in terms of uh, handling audio and video but it will actually handle your whole production uh, we have very good granular user access control for clear workflows where people can get the tools that they need to do the work that they do and no access to tools that they don't need that would uh, maybe not cause things to happen that you want um, and it's infinitely scalable because it's got SQL server technology behind it which means that uh, if you need more archive you can add more servers you can also uh, protect it in the enterprise way by running uh, an SQL server cluster from Microsoft we support that completely so archive is a very very good way of looking after all of your uh, production assets So, um, so then, so <clears throat> then we have the Synergy Desktop. Synergy Desktop is the window into Synergy Archive, and it allows you to work on the content that is contained within Synergy Archive. Browse it, tag it, edit, log it. Uh, edit the meta metadata search and find stuff blisteringly quickly because uh, we don't really do that much with SQL server and therefore it responds very very fast you can pull back queries across petabytes of data in a matter of seconds um, and uh, this is because uh, we're not asking it to do too much metadata searches are easy for SQL server uh, you can go direct to the playout from your edit timeline. The desktop includes, as I've said, from editing, it includes a timeline editor on which you can build uh, from multiple video tracks, multiple audio tracks, add in graphics, add in effects, create your complete program on the, the timeline. And then at that point, as soon as you are finished, that can go to air. We'll take care of all of it. There's nothing, to, no need to render, and nothing, no need to do anything else. You can go straight from the, the play line, play it from the timeline to your playout system. It means a very, very fast, clean production workflow. There is also an integrated newsroom client, uh, complete, ready to go because Synergy already makes document servers and video servers uh, and graphic servers. Uh, with the in the other applications that it has so you can have a complete newsroom without using any MOS content uh, but be able to have exactly the same functionality uh, and new the social media integration that I mentioned before this is tied into the convert social media integration but we've made a couple of things easier for example if you're sending up a video to social media that has a square aspect ratio then you will probably want to make sure that your video fits in that square window. So as a result, we now offer in desktop a square safe area to allow you to frame your video correctly before you pass it out through your, through your job drop uh, to your social media upload. So that, in essence, I think covers all of the talking. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you these four products and I'm going to show you what they do and I'm also going to show you how they are hooked into each other using SRT Daniel 2 and shared RAM technology um, and by doing that how they are saving resources on the machine underneath so I'm going to close the presentation now and start opening oh, start opening up uh, my 
uh, demonstration for you. So to begin at the beginning, we'll start with capture. Here we have uh, the capture support, uh, capture manager, I should say, uh, which is showing our uh, running input at the moment. We have two systems, right? Two two services running on this machine. Uh, we are outputting a shared RAM preview, uh, which we're going to be seeing again a little bit later on. Uh, from here, we can see uh, also uh, if you if you look carefully towards the bottom of the screen in the middle, you'll see the input to capture. This input is an SRT stream, and this SRT stream is coming from. Nuremberg, which is in Germany, that is uh, about a thousand kilometers away from me, but it's coming to me across the public internet. And uh, so, as simple as that, I can get play out over the internet. I don't have to go via uh, an Aspera, I don't have to go via a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, any kind of uh, special technology, I don't have to go over a satellite. Uh, I can. Um, simply send it down the internet and pick it up at the other end. So we have an SRT stream coming in to Synergy Capture and we have a preview of shared RAM to go out. We can also see in here uh, the telemetry field which is new. Uh, from here we can send telemetry on our capture performance up to telemetry.synergy.com which will then graph it for us uh, to look at. Here we can see, uh, yes I do, here we can see uh, where we can send our event presets, our cross points, et cetera, to allow uh, routers, et cetera, to be switched uh, in order to make the correct recording. Uh, the dashboard, here we can see on the dashboard that um, uh, we're running kind of okay at the moment, 65% uh, CPU usage, uh, around 50% of the GPU, slightly less, plenty of memory left. At a glance, we can see how the system is running from here. and. Uh, so uh, and then here, it, here is we're back at the summary screen right now. From here, I can go to the uh, control screen, and here we see our preview, uh, smooth preview uh, of our input. And uh, if I look over here, I can be uh, aware of exactly what resources are being used in order to make this capture happen. Uh, the CPU usage uh, and GPU usage, buffering, et cetera. We're not seeing any buffering because we're not actually capturing anything, but all of these things are, are vis visible at a glance and can be uh, assigned per capture channel. I only have one running at the moment because I'm running everything on a single box. Uh, so there we so we see SRT and shared RAM in capture. And the next one we're going to have a look at, we're going to have a look at Synergy Air. So uh, the Synergy Air system, as you will already know, um, allows you to use our technology to create broadcast servers, uh, play out and uh, uh, encoding uh, to allow you to switch between uh, baseband and uh, um, IP streams. If we look here, we can see um, three, uh, these are three HD playouts that are happening at the moment, uh, coming from uh, various sources. And uh, as you, if you look at the center of the screen, you will see where it says CPU. I don't even know if it's going to be visible, uh, but you will see the CPU usage for my three HD playouts is practically zero. The, uh, all of the work that's being done here now, all of the heavy lifting is being handled either uh, by uh, the graphics card, the GPU, which now has taken over a great deal of the work for us, or it's because the video that's being presented there was actually being rendered somewhere else and simply parked uh, in our uh, playout system. So as a result, it's possible I'm running three HD playouts here along with everything else that I'm doing on a simple, uh, a simple six core uh, i7 workstation. So uh, how is that happening? Well, if I go to my engine here, the first engine, I have a quick look. I've got my engine here. There is a button here in the middle that says on start, immediately switch to live. Now, uh, usually if I do training courses, I tell people don't touch that button uh, because you don't need, need it. 
for your usual air configuration. Uh, but in this particular case, I'm running this engine in encode mode. So uh, when a, a signal comes in, it's being turned into something else uh, to go back out again. If I go to my playback section, then we can see that um, my live input is going out as a shared RAM output. And uh, we will also see if we look down to the bottom of the configuration screen that the feedback codec, that's the codec that takes the preview streams for your um, playout. Uh, that feedback codec is set to Daniel. By setting it to Daniel, again, all effort is taken away from the CPU uh, and it allows um, the, the uh, GPU to, to do your heavy lifting for you uh, and savagely reduces the, uh, the, the amount of resources that you need in order to make your play out. Uh, here again is the DTMF uh, window. So just as I mentioned earlier, DTMF can now be configured uh, in air. And here again, we can see our uh, input that we've been taking in, uh, and the input is again RSRT stream coming from Nuremberg. Uh, so um, the we're, sh we're showing here that the amount of resources that you need to use now uh, to run multiple streams of video and to combine them within our system uh, are considerably lowered. So uh, if I go now to air control, I'm going to have to, oh yes, so I'm going to have to uh, make a quick change here because, uh, yes, and yes. So. So I've just had to do this because uh, I hadn't set up in advance. Sorry about that. Now, so here we see uh, the playlist that we should all be familiar with by now. Um, and uh, we can see the uh, um, items as they're being played out. Um, and there is also a new feature here which, in which we can create categories for uh, items. So uh, when you're placing item in the playlist if you want to mark it by genre uh, or identify it by any other means you can set a an identifier for it now and uh, the uh, also here that's new is in our uh, secondary events we have uh, our favorites which allow you to create uh, batches of secondary events that can be added with a single mouse click these events can be put onto a single channel or now they can also be created as common favorites across channels. So I could have a set of secondary events that I could use across my multiple channels here and uh, uh, simply store those in one single place and select them as necessary. So um, that's there's those just two little things in the player interface, but, um, but they are uh, useful little things all the same. The most of the work has been happening in the back end. It's been happening in the engine. So moving forwards from uh, air, I'm going to take a look now at the multi-viewer. If I pop up the multi-viewer configurator, we can see if I go to my input settings, there's some changes now. Uh, our input possibilities have significantly increased. Pretty much used to be simply SDI and RTP. Now we have a bunch of other stuff. NDI input is very important. There are a lot of people out there that are using NDI in their workflows and our multi-viewer supports it without any difficulty at all. We already have extremely happy customers using it. Uh, the MPEG TS is what we used to call RTP because, uh, but now it's, that's, it's a bit more than that. So it's MPEG TS, which allows you to select RTP, uh, UDP, SRT. Shared RAM, already mentioned allows you to pull your multi-viewer players from video that's already been rendered somewhere else and therefore significantly reduce the amount of uh, resources that multi-viewer needs in order to give you the information that you want. We have a webcam input now for setup purposes. Sometimes you need that input signal and there isn't anything else available. Well, you can plug in a webcam now and put that in as a multi-viewer input. Also, uh, anything using a Windows driver model that handles multimedia, if it outputs uh, audio and video, uh, we can talk to that. We can't talk to it the same way that we can talk to stuff that we've written uh, our own uh, uh, 
uh, software for, where we're working with proper drivers, as it were. But it will certainly make it possible. It increases the amount of hardware that you can use with us. Um, but uh, clearly, anything that's WDM is uh, pretty much up to you to, to look after. We can't really support it. We can't do everything. And I, uh, I, um, 2022-6-7 is also now uh, included um, as a possible input. So you have a, a great deal of flexibility in your input streams. These will remain uh, uh, broadcast-based uh, for now. Um, because we are in the broadcast business, so we're, we, we don't uh, anticipate adding things like RTMP or anything like that in there. Um, if you have that need, talk to us. We've got ways of, that can make it happen. So here I'm looking uh, at the uh, shared RAM input, uh, capture input, uh, which is coming from the CE1, which is the virtual device, which is my uh, output from capture. Um, so this is using the mosaic layout. If I go instead to the designer layout, we have uh, a layout in place um, that has uh, four channels on three different layouts, of which I've populated two, uh, and we can see what they look like. Um, outputs uh, on the output side, we have the window output as ever, and in addition, we have RTP output here and MPEG TS output. This is uh, like this because uh, I upgraded from an earlier version, and the earlier version said RTP output. This demonstrates that if you do an upgrade in place with our software, uh, that's all you need to do, upgrade in place. Simply run the upgrade and restart the software, and it will pull over uh, your configuration information from previously uh, and add it in. So the RTP output was earlier configured. Uh, it's been edited now. Uh, and the more recent input is the MPEG TS output, but they are in fact both the same thing, simply how they've been automatically labeled by the system. So we can see here I'm outputting to the window and I'm outputting also to two uh, SRT streams all at the same time. If I want to add an SRT stream or any other kind of an output, click down here, I can add another SRT stream. I can output my Multiviewer's shared RAM. This is obviously ideal for that situation where uh, you're going to be using multiple multi-viewer servers to compass it to one humongous screen. Um, uh, and I can also output to an NDI output if I'm in the, an NDI space. Um, everything else is uh, pretty much as we know it. Uh, we have our various encoding options, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the multiple output here is clearly visible. And uh, if we then move over to our notifier, uh, we can see we've got um, uh, a new uh, notifier here, event manager. So from here, if we enable uh, that, we can now identify an event manager server, which could be an air, uh, air server, playout server, or it could be a standalone event manager server. And we can specify devices, commands, and their parameters, and give it a test to make sure that it works. So in other words, your multi-viewer doesn't simply uh, flash the screen at you and give you an audible alert. It will also now uh, actually do something. It will actually trigger some hardware in the background. If you build your workflow around that, uh, then basically you'll never be embarrassed by anything breaking because if something breaks, it will simply switch to another source. Uh, on the uh, notify, uh, I'll, I'll just disable that again. Um, now, if I go to my alarm settings, here we see the previously mentioned color bar alert and the uh, pure tone alert. So uh, in both of these cases, configurable as are all of the other alerts that we have, uh, and that is to say, um, what is it important? Is it just informational? Whatever. Uh, give it the uh, relevant level here, and then the notifier will handle it accordingly. So for color bars, um, we can uh, put in the color bar and tone alert and set those to uh, probably have to set those to a, a little bit of extra time because sometimes graphics guys like to throw color bars and stuff in uh, to be like amusing. So uh, you have to be ready for that. If you set it for like a one second and somebody's done you a graphic that's got them in then. But um, uh, nonetheless, they are now in here. So what does it look like uh, if I'm actually using it? Uh, well, it looks like this. So I go to uh, my multi-view window 
and here we can see my all of my shared RAM inputs. Now, um, my capture uh, input cap has has frozen, or rather stopped. My loop has stopped. Um, nonetheless, we're seeing here the capture identifier um, in the window here that tells us that capture is ready. Uh, and I could start capturing if all I wanted to capture was a chat with his back to me and a, a subtitle. Um, but the capture tally is visible there. If, if I come here, then I'm using my uh, using the NetPlay utility. Now, these uh, the NetPlay utility is uh, a little something that we have that's always been delivered as part of Root. Uh, it's um, a simple and straightforward uh, Root. Um, a simple and straightforward um, player that will allow you to take a stream and uh, simply play it in a window. Uh, what, what's good about it is that if you're using multiple uh, network interfaces, uh, it goes quite well with those. VLC, which is what most people would grab to do something like this, uh, has trouble with multiple inputs. So what we're looking at at the SRT inputs um, is uh, at the uh, top left, we have our Playout that's been playing throughout on all of our other systems. Under that, we have um, a, a transport stream loop that's been uh, running. And then the third window, the multi viewer, this is a multi viewer SRT output. And this is coming again from Nuremberg. So in Nuremberg, we can see that they've got the audio level way up too high uh, on their playout because we're getting clipping warnings. Uh, next to that, we can see the queued item. And the next thing that will be playing when this particular uh, piece of footage finishes. Um, below that, you can see uh, that a startlingly handsome gentleman of distinguished years. Uh, that is an image that I've sent from my cell phone, just simply right before I started the session here. And this demonstrates an SRT feed from a phone to, um, uh, to uh, via SRT to anywhere. My cell phone has gone a thousand kilometers to Nuremberg and it's put my, my distinguished features uh, into a window there. It's frozen because I switched the, the stream off. Uh, if I switched it back on, you'd see me moving and waving and stuff, but uh, that's not necessary. Player four was reserved for an SRT output uh, from air control that I forgot to switch on. Sorry about that, folks. But it's uh, it's exactly the same as the one we see upstairs with the uh, the, the chap um, with the microphone in his mouth. Uh, it, it works exactly the same way. And it's simply not there because of uh, disorganization. Uh, I crave your indulgence for that. So uh, so we can see here we have one Synergy MultiViewer running on one single, not particularly powerful PC and I'm outputting two completely separate inputs, and the SRT input could be being played anywhere I like. So uh, with that's uh, covered the multi-viewer, and the last thing, I'm gonna close it, yes, just to give myself a little bit more air. Uh, and the last thing that I wanted to look at is Synergy Root. So uh, Synergy Root um, allows you to handle your uh, IP signals, and uh, route them through your system um, with a straightforward point and click interface, very straightforward uh, to use. And hit with here, oh, I'm just starting my root controller up. The way that root works is that you have three tools that are delivered with it. Uh, you have the control, uh, you have the manager, and you have the browser. So begins with the manager because with with the manager, you set up all of your inputs. So here I have uh, my inputs sorted by resolution, and I can select one of my inputs uh, and uh, start it, and I should be able to see, uh, there we have my uh, uh, Japanese footage. So I can preview in here, um, but I can also add stuff in here, simply add uh, an uh, item, give it uh, the necessary information here. Uh, if this is a uh, transport stream coming in, an MPTS, then I can drop all of the signals here and see, uh, simply read from the stream from the PIDs uh, and see all of my signals visible here uh, as part of the transport stream. If I go here, I have all my SRT inputs. So I can go here again, select this, uh, and we'll be back to seeing the playout that's coming from 
Nuremberg, which is now uh, the chap with the microphone in his mouth, as you can see. So, if, and if I go to the Nuremberg multiviewer, we will see that the queued item has has now changed to the next item that we'll be playing, uh, as we can see clearly here. So, uh, all of my SRT streams are visible here. I can route from here to uh, anywhere that I like with them, and the routing is handled by virtual destinations. The virtual destination um, is simply an HTTP. Uh, um, URL that our systems understand that will know where to go to pick up that signal and I can uh, configure this also to include source changed secondary events in other words if the input changes uh, is a secondary event to be triggered uh, and how is it to be done and we can trigger secondary events straight from here so uh, with the uh, when it gets down to the user end you would uh, have access to root control. From here, I can take my uh, content and I can simply switch it in to the root here and uh, it will change and I can view that, preview it. We should be seeing a lady talking about Europe. So if I want to change that input now, I can pick a different input, hit switch, and uh, we can see the different input here. So, um, so the uh, each of these destinations can be set up, and then they can be set up as inputs in, for example, in MultiViewer. So, if I go back to my input settings here um, and go to Mosaic and pick a source, uh, if I were to set uh, um, a um, an MPEG TS source here, then I would have the possibility of selecting that source from the virtual destination. And if I click on the virtual destination, you can see there it's a URI that says um, get that input and use that input. That means that you can switch the inputs to MultiViewer from Synergy Root. Um, they can also use that same technology, uh, simply browse for your input uh, in Air uh, and in Capture. So you root, multiviewer, air and capture together are all knitted together using SRT, using Daniel2 and using shared RAM technology. And that provides you then with uh, an optimized system for software defined television where you can get the maximum return and the maximum power from uh, the most simple uh, basic hardware these days. No more need, no need any more for ten thousand dollar processors. Uh, you can do all this with basic processors and uh, and give a an enjoyable viewing experience to your end users using Synergy software. And with that, that's the end of the demo. Um, so thanks very much for your attention. Let me see. Does anybody have a question? I don't see any questions right now. Uh, I'm, this is, I'm still learning here, so oh, my webcam has apparently stopped to work. Um, that's frustrating. Let me just see. Um, I don't want you. So, thanks very much for your attention. Uh, thanks for joining us. If you have uh, any queries, anything like that, just drop us a mail at sales at synergy.com and we'll do our best to help you. Uh, I'll be running this again this afternoon. If anybody joined late and wants to see it, it'll be uh, running at uh, uh, 1500 UK time, 1600 uh, continental time. And uh, for the rest, thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you at the next one. Bye bye.